Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use a linear approximation to estimate a function value on a function that may otherwise be difficult to work with. So we use the process of creating a tangent line to a curve at a point, which we've done many times, and then plugging in a value nearby to get an estimate. So let's take a look at what we've got here. So if we kind of zoom in on where we created our tangent line to our curve, we can see here that if we created our tangent line at the point a comma f of a, then as long as we are fairly close to that point, the difference between the actual function value and the y value that we can get by plugging in an x value to our tangent line is very small. As we move further away from A, so as we move further away from our point of tangency, that approximation is going to get further and further away from the true value. So we wanna be aware of that, but as long as we can stay close to our point of tangency, we can get a pretty good approximation, and here's how we do that. We take our point A comma F of A, and using our point slope form, we substitute in y1 for f of a. We get our slope by using our derivative at a, so f prime at a, and we replace x1 with a. Just for ease in the later steps, if we solve that for y by adding over our f of a to the other side, we get that any y value on that tangent line can be found by taking f of a plus f prime of a times x, so any x value that we want to use, minus a. So let's take a look at how it works. We want to use a linear approximation, so that method we just discussed, to estimate the value of the square root of 50. So if we're not working with a perfect square, estimating a square root can be a little bit rough. Here, I know that the square root of 49 is 7, so logic tells me that the square root of 50 is a little bit more than 7, but what if I needed to be more precise than that and I'm not able to use a calculator? That's where the process of linear approximations can come in and be useful. So what we want to do is first identify the function that we're working with. Here, the function is the square root function, so our f of x is square root of x. The next thing that we want to identify is our point a, f of a, that is going to be easy to work with given this function and close to the value we're interested in. So I need here a perfect square that is close to 50. In this case that would be 49 as my x value and square root of 49 or 7 as my y value. So now I want to go through the normal procedure of creating a tangent line to this curve at this point. So starting off we'll take our derivative, remembering that square root of x can be written as x to the 1 half power, we get a derivative of 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. For making that a little easier to evaluate here in just a moment, I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over 2 times the square root of x. So now I need f prime evaluated at my a value, or my 49. So that's 1 over 2 times the square root of 49, or 1 over 2 times 7, or 1 14th. All right, so now we've got everything we need. Let's create that tangent line approximation. So y is f of a, or 7, plus f prime of a, or 1 over 14, times x minus a, or 49. So now we can use this tangent line to get our approximation for the square root of 50. So the square root of 50 will be approximately 7 plus 1 over 14 times 50 minus 49. 
that comes out to be 7 plus 1 over 14 times 50 minus 49 is 1. Getting a common denominator here, 7 times 14 is 98. So now I have 98 over 14 plus 1 over 14, or 99 over 14. So there we have our tangent line approximation value, 99 over 14, for the square root of 50. Now, a couple of things we might be wondering. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't know what 99 over 14 is, just intuitively, so we might want to type that in somewhere. And then also, I'm wondering how well we did. How good of an approximation is that? So just to check, just for curiosity's sake, 99 over 14 is 7.0714, etc. And just for clarity, square root of 50 is 7.07106, and so on. So we can see that our approximation did yield something slightly over 7, like we expected, and it is not until the fourth decimal place that we even see a difference in our approximation from the actual value. All right, just to be sure we've got it, let's see that one more time. So here, let's use a linear approximation to estimate the value of the cube root of 26. So this is going to be a similar process. We first want to identify what function we're working with. Here, since we're trying to take the cube root of 26, we are working with the cube root function. Next, we want to identify a point that is easy to work with on our cube root function, but that is as close as possible to 26 as we can be. So perfect cubes close to 26, while the closest one is 3 cubed or 27. And so we would have the point 27 comma 3. All right, thinking of cube root of x as x to the 1 3rd power, our derivative would be 1 3rd x to the negative 2 thirds, or 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds power. Evaluating that at 27, we get 1 over 3 times 27 to the 2 thirds power, or that will be 1 over 3 times. 27 under a cube root is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So 27 to the 2 thirds gives us 9. So our overall slope for our tangent line is 1 over 27. Okay, so putting that into our format, we need f of a, or 3, plus f prime at a, or 1 over 27, times x minus a, or 27. Now using that to get our approximation for the cube root of 26, we're going to replace x in our equation with 26. So this gives us 3 plus 1 over 27 times 26 minus 27 is negative 1. Getting a common denominator of 27, 3 times 27 is 81. And then we'll be subtracting 1 over 27. So our approximation is 80 over 27, or something just smaller than 3. So once again, just to see how well we did, 80 over 27 gives us a value of 2.9629, etc. And the true value for cube root of 26 is 2.9624, and so on. So just like the last example, we ended up with something that doesn't see a difference until the fourth decimal place. Keep in mind, though, that was because we used 27 and 26. The further away from a perfect square you have to work, the bigger the error in your approximation that you will see. All right, guys, well, that does it for this video on linear approximations. We'll catch you in a future one.